How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in this video I'm going to be covering some really useful optimizations in which you can apply to practically any AMD Radeon GPU. The optimizations we're mainly going to be covering in this video are going to be how to set up and utilize different driver versions, which driver version you should be looking to install, alongside installing minimal or driver only installs to really cut down the amount of bloat that's included in many GPU drivers. The benefits from doing this are a much lower CPU load, freeing up more CPU resources, increasing 1% and 0.1% low FPS. Not only will you increase performance, but you'll also be customizing the driver for your personal use and dropping all of the excess features you probably don't want to be using anyway for your personal preference. Whether you're running on a high-end, low-end, old or new GPU, Windows 10 or Windows 11, it does not matter. The settings and optimizations we're going to be covering in this video are practically available to all people watching. Tired of seeing the activate Windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. So to start off, we first of all need to download the latest AMD Radeon driver for us to customize, as there have been some phenomenal bug fixes with inside of the drivers. Simply take yourself over to amd.com slash en slash support. If you're not sure what GPU you have, head over to your desktop, hit Control, Shift, and Escape to open Task Manager. On the left hand side, go to the performance tab. On Windows 10, that's found at the top. Then scroll right towards the bottom until you find GPU 0. On the top right hand side, you'll then be able to see the make model and individual model number for the GPU you are using. Scroll on towards the bottom to find your driver. Select graphics. On the right hand side, select the graphics series in which you are using. Your graphics card series may be different, but make sure that your model matches what it's listed as in Task Manager. Scroll down, select the operating system version you're running on, then navigate down, and this should be the latest version supported for your GPU. Go over to download and just save this to your your desktop or anywhere where you remember it. We then want to make use of DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller. If you're not familiar with this program or process, it is the number one thing I'd recommend that anyone does if they ever experience any monitor issues, black screen issues, low FPS. Utilizing DDU correctly will allow you to delete and remove all excess old GPU drivers which are lurking on your system. You could have tons of GPU driver updates just stacked on top of each other, causing conflicting files, taking up space in your PC, and it's just not a good time. Simply do a Google search for Display Driver Uninstaller or DDU you can head over to the official wagnardsoft.com link or you could utilize guru 3d that's done right click on the folder hit extract or then extract drag the ddu.exe over to your desktop double click on this zip file then select extract you'll then be given a folder in your desktop titled ddu we're now ready to install our driver if you are planning on making use of ddu there's one extra step we need to do there is an option inside of ddu to manually disable this but it can disable some windows functionality so there's no point in doing that easiest and quickest way to do this is to go down to your network settings right click go to network and internet Head over to your Wi-Fi or Ethernet. If you have Wi-Fi, simply turn it off. For Ethernet users, navigate down to Advanced Network Settings. Then navigate down towards the bottom to More Network Adapter Options. Then just simply right-click on your Ethernet adapter and disable this for now. Take yourself to the bottom left-hand side. Click on the Windows button. Find the Shift key. Press and hold this. Whilst holding Shift, right-click on the Power button. Select Restart and continue to hold the Shift key. Once inside of the screen, navigate down to Troubleshoot. Down to Advanced Options. Then down to Startup Settings. Go down to the Restart button and click this. Inside of the startup settings screen that you're then brought into, we're going to be enabling option number four just to boot into safe mode. Log in as you usually would. What we then need to do is navigate to the DDU folder, double click, find display driver uninstaller. I like to run this as admin. Take yourself over to the right hand side, select GPU. If you have ever installed an Nvidia or Intel card with inside of here, I would first of all run DDU for those drivers. I used to have an Nvidia card installed to this system. I no longer have it installed to this system, so I'm going to remove these drivers first. Navigate over to the left hand side to clean and do not restart. Run the process it can take a few moments once that's complete select no to exit now you can then navigate down to the drop down menu then select our amd radeon gpu once you've selected that go to the top left hand side to clean and restart the system will automatically restart into default mode inside of windows where we can then install our driver once restarted log in as you usually would we then need to locate the driver in which we downloaded earlier on for me that's on the desktop double click on the driver to begin installing it select run then select yes you navigate to the bottom and select install before you go ahead and just automatically install this yourself we are going to be setting some custom options, so don't just rush ahead with this. Once inside of this page, navigate down to the bottom where it says additional options. The important setting we're going to be adjusting with inside of here is the install type. You can go for the full installation, which will come with all of the features.
features and functionality of the entire Adrenaline software suite. Next up you have the minimal install. On screen now you'll be able to see a list of all the features which are included and the features which are not. Then finally the driver only install. Driver only will mean that the display driver has been installed to the system and that is it. You'll still be able to get all of the fantastic performance that comes with your GPU, you just won't have any of the Adrenaline software features. For most of you watching this video I'd actually recommend against going with the full install unless there is an individual feature locked into the full install that you need to make use of. Then I would highly recommend going with either minimal install or potentially even driver only. Again, if for any reason you want to add back that functionality, all you need to do is jump back into the driver installation page and just go with the full install or minimal install to add those features back. The lower amount of applications, features and bloat your system is running, the better your performance is going to be and you'll be receiving the lowest possible input latency from reducing those processes. Do bear in mind that there are still third party applications like MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner Statistics Server so you can still have some of that functionality like overclocking, undervolting, performance tuning. Select the option which best suits your personal preference. Once selected, go to the bottom right, then select install. Once your driver has finished installing and you've restarted the PC, make sure to navigate back down to the bottom right and re-enable your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet. For Wi-Fi users, select Wi-Fi on. For Ethernet users, navigate to the bottom to advanced network settings, then to the bottom to more network adapter options, right click on the Ethernet and enable that. Now for those of you that went with a full install or minimal install, you'll still have the Radeon software panel installed, so we're going to go over a few quick basic settings you should have set up on there or further look into. Right click on the desktop, open up the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition driver. Start by going up to the gaming tab at the top. Once inside of here we can start with global graphics. These are the graphics settings which will be applied to all games on your system so don't go changing everything with inside of here. For really odd individual settings that you may want to utilize I'd recommend setting those up on a per game basis back in the previous page. Radio anti-lag is definitely an option I'd recommend at least experimenting around with especially for those of you playing more GPU demanding games as the higher the load on the GPU the better AMD Radeon anti-lag will perform and help reduce your input latency. And if you want to set an FPS cap for any reason, whether you're using FreeSync or looking to cap FPS with inside of games, you can navigate down to the advanced section, turn the frame rate target control to on and set your custom FPS cap number. Next up is the display settings. If you are going to be making use of AMD FreeSync, you'll need to enable that with inside of here. Navigating down to your GPU scaling option, I would highly recommend enabling this. Setting the scaling mode to full panel and I would highly recommend utilizing integer scaling if you are not utilizing RSR. Integer scaling is a fantastic option which is available on many Radeon GPUs which will allow those on 1440p or 4K monitors to be able to utilize resolutions such as 720p and 1080p but have them scale one to one and properly on their displays for a really sharp and clear experience. If that is something that interests you there is a video coming to the channel really soon it may already even be out so make sure to check the description down below for that. If the option is available to you heading up to the performance tab in the top right hand side then navigating over to tuning. If you do have the option for AMD smart access memory I would highly recommend enabling this. If it's not currently available or you cannot turn it on inside of this panel, you may be able to enable the resizable bar option on your system's BIOS to unlock this functionality in some cases, and if you can do that, I would highly recommend that you do so. You'll also find automatic tuning profiles at the top that you could experiment around with, or even custom tuning if you want to try your hand at that, but that's only for experienced users. But what about those of you that decided to go with a driver-only install or minimal install? A program and utility I would highly recommend having on hand would be to utilize MSI Afterburner and Revituna Statistics Server or RTSS, which comes bundled with it. This is practically a must-have for those of you using a driver-only install, but you can not adjust the parameters for your GPU fan profile, your performance tuning, or implement FPS caps. But if you aren't looking to overclock or undervolt or get into any of that, I would at least look into setting up a custom fan profile, because the cooler you can make your GPU, the better the performance you'll be getting on all games for longer. Revituna Statistics Server, or RTSS, is a super useful tool in which you can utilize to maximize how smooth your games feel. You can implement quick and easy FPS caps with inside of it, and this is super useful, especially for those of you utilizing FreeSync, or just looking to cap your FPS towards your monitor's refresh rate. All you need to do is have your game running in the background you want to cap the FPS for, hold control on your keyboard, then select add. Add the application individually with inside of here, then go over to the right hand side to frame rate limit, then implement your FPS cap. I'm playing on a 120Hz monitor, and I want to cap my FPS to 120. I've input that number, and I'm then set up and good to go. Another very basic setting, but something you should definitely make sure that you have enabled on your monitor, is to right click, go to your display settings, navigate towards the bottom to advanced display, and make sure that you have the highest possible refresh rate set for your monitor. Alongside this, with the latest AMD Radeon drivers, we can see if we've actually unlocked the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling functionality for some Radeon GPUs. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side, type GPU space settings. Once inside of this panel, if you do see the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, make sure that you enable this. Another quick bonus tip for those of you on Windows 11, head inside of the default settings panel and ensure that optimizations for windowed games has been enabled. This will help out a lot when playing windowed games or DirectX 12 titles. With your driver installed, whether you went with the full install, minimal install or driver only, we can then remove some 
from the excess bloat from the driver. Take yourself down to the bottom to your Windows File Explorer. On the left hand side, go to this PC, local disk C, then go inside of the AMD folder. You'll more than likely find a ton of GPU driver folders with inside of here. You could be looking at gigabytes worth of GPU drivers in here. This is used for the rollback feature. If you don't need to roll back the GPU driver you're currently using, there's no real need to have these. I'm going to be removing them on this PC. Keep the chipset underscore software folder, right click and select delete. We can actually disable some of the extra features running in the background of our GPU to once again alleviate even more load off of the system. Again, I must stress that this individual optimization is for those of you that are advanced users that know what you're doing and you can easily revert these settings back. For this, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, type device space manager. Start by navigating down to the system devices section where you'll then be able to find AMD link controller emulation. If you don't use the AMD link feature, navigate down and disable this device Then select yes. Again, if at any point you need to re-enable that functionality, just right click and select enable. Next is going to be the AMD crash defender, right click, disable device. We then want to navigate over to the software components tab where you'll then be able to find the AMD dynamic audio noise suppression setting, navigate down and disable this as well. There are also a few more options you need to look out for in games which can drastically boost performance on AMD Radeon GPUs. See if there are alternative rendering APIs available inside of your favourite games. For example, here we have Apex Legends. Apex Legends is a DirectX 11 title primarily, but there is actually a playable DirectX 12 beta in which you can enable. AMD Radeon GPUs perform exceptionally well on Vulkan and DirectX 12 rendering APIs. If Vulkan or DX12 are available on any game you play, select one of those rather than utilising DirectX 11, DirectX 10 or DirectX 9. All you need to do is go over to Apex and Steam, right click to Properties, go to the front of My Custom Launch Options, then all you need to do is simply add in this launch option towards the bottom. Once that's then pasted in, exit out, boot into the game and Apex is then running in DirectX 12, giving me a phenomenal FPS boost especially towards 0.1 and 1% low FPS. Do a tiny bit of research, do some googling, you'll quickly and easily be able to find out if it does support it and how to change that setting in your game. When you do reinstall drivers or install a new driver to an AMD Radeon GPU, first few matches you play in some of your favourite games or the first time you spawn into a single player game, you are going to experience quite heavy stuttering for the first few minutes or first few matches. This is completely normal, it's because it's rebuilding the shader cache for your games and that's what's causing the stuttering. It does clear up after a few games, you'll then be left with that silky smooth gameplay experience and now with all of these optimizations on top, even better performance. For those of you on older or less supported Radeon GPUs that may not be getting all of the latest driver updates, you could definitely look into going down the route of installing some of the modded drivers which are floating across the internet which are becoming widely available and very quickly updated, bringing some of the latest functionality from the newer Radeon GPUs to some of the older Radeon cards so you could unlock a ton of extra functionality by looking to go with some modded drivers rather than the official route. If you have enjoyed this video and have got decent results, please do consider leaving a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. And if you're looking to dive deeper into more optimization videos, feel free to check out the videos linked in the description down below or check out one of the two videos on screen now. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you guys over there.